Okay, so today we are going to discuss and I'm going to demonstrate how you will um, copy repositories using Bitbucket so that you can keep all the previous versions and um, I guess break up projects into ways that are more reasonable later. So I guess one of the reasons why you'd want to break up a repository or make a copy of it is if you wanted to say keep the original version and before you deleted the older version um, you wanted to uh, just make sure that the new ones work so like for example I'm going to give you a real life example we have this reverse indexing app it's pretty great however what we've learned is um, we have this front end here and this back end and we want to actually have multiple types of front ends and because of that, we felt like we really needed to break it up so that we have one repository at the back end that has the stuff that's needed for the back end, and then a repository for the front end that, um, that we can then copy and make multiple repositories. That we have, say, one repository for the back end that manages all the back end stuff, and then several different ones for different applications. Like we need one for prisons that they can index in prison, which obviously is going to be, require some different modeling for the front end. Um, one for like children and then one for kind of normal people who are adults, you know, maybe not, might not appreciate some of the other things we put for children. And so because of that, we felt like we needed to break it up. So I'm going to show you how to um, copy your repository so that you can make the changes in that repository. And what we're going to start out with doing is get to the repository you want to change. You're going to go I'm going to copy this link up here. You can actually do it with the clone one, but I'll demonstrate it right here. Um, let me first of all, I'm going to put this in a new tab. That way we can have both of them. Okay, so you go over here, create repository, and you're going to import a repository. One of the things to note here is we want this to be um, FHTL. This is not just yours, so always make sure you change the order. But this right here is like really finicky. I don't know why it is. But for some reason, when you change it, it'll always save old imports that you've done. And when you edit one thing on the top or the bottom, it might change things on the bottom. So um, basically what I'll do is I'll paste in here the repository that I have here. And if there's authentication failed, that's because it requires authentication. So when you, you click the check mark, you put your username and password for Bitbucket in here. And double check and just make sure that this is the right repository that you want to import. Copy everything from it, basically. So that is what I wanted to do. So I'm going to make sure that I didn't have the new one with FHTL. Select a project that it goes with. This is like more of just a group of repositories, so like RL indexing. That's theirs. And uh, I'm going to call this RI, so reverse indexing backend. I actually previously created this, but we ended up deleting it. But you notice when I did that, right up here, it put the old one here. This is not the repository that I wanted to clone, so I actually have to repaste it. I don't know why. It, you have to like double check several times before you do it. Um, under advanced, make sure that it only allows private forks because you don't want... It's a private repository because this is, this is FHTL's source code, BYU's. This is not somebody else's. And once you've gone over everything, make sure it's the right link, make sure the authentication works, make sure it's uh, FHTL is the owner and the right project with the right name that you want, um, private, and you only allow private forks, then you can import the repository. And you'll see it'll do a bunch of fancy stuff, it'll clone everything, and it should build, up, build everything out for you that you need. And I'll go right to it. Okay. Now that we're here, you'll notice it looks like any other repository, except it literally has the same commit changes. This is what you want. You want it to look the exact same and feel the exact same. Um, that way you can look over previous commits if in the future versions you do that. One of the things that um, you can now do is you can now break it up. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually take that front end. I won't show you that I'm going to do that, but that's what I can do. Um, Always, though, when you make a new repository, you're going to often need to change stuff in the settings. So, um, in the settings, you'll usually want to put an issue tracker and create a private issue tracker. This is the people who have access to the repository, which should be everybody who is on BOFHTL. 
you save that, and then you'll see this Issues tab popped up. This is useful if, I don't know, the group that you're using uses issues. Right now we're doing Trello, but it could change. And then um, we'll save that. And then one of the important things that you'll need to do is do user and group access. And as you see, so right now I am an admin on this, so I can do whatever I want to do with it. And I'll show you how to do this later, but one of the things that you need to do with all the repositories is make sure that the right person is able to access it. But yeah, that's the first part of this video.